join me in our Advent reflection for the fourth Sunday in Advent. Sacred mystery, we light the fourth candle of Advent for purity of conscience. Light of the world in grace and beauty, mirror of God's eternal face, transparent flame of love's true duty, you bring salvation to our human race. The Holy Spirit is ever present, endlessly available to each of us. It is our humanness that often prevents us from experiencing the Holy Spirit in our daily lives. Holiness is the balance between human nature and the law of God as expressed in Jesus Christ. In the coming week, let us rely upon the Holy Spirit to purify our consciences, preparing our hearts and minds to welcome the Christ child with joy and thanksgiving. Amen. Please refer to your bulletin for the account this week. I'd like to change the page to the Saying the college for purity at the bottom of the page. 
Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Turning the page at the bottom of 356. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Oz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord, your God. Let it be deep as Sheol and high as heaven. But as Oz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear them, O house of David. It is too little for you, to, for the weary mortals, that you are weary, my God, also. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and should bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before those two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 80. We will receive, we'll, um, read by half verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your happiness. And we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them the bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the desertion of our neighbors. And our enemies left us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The son of man you may be so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us light that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the holy scriptures, the gospel according to his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection of the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring apart about the obedience of faith of among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In your bulletin, you'll find an insert, and we see this at the top, um, with, wait, 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 with um, gospel um, 
processional. We sing the first three verses before the gospel and the final two after the gospel. Please stand. <laughs> family, and about how they stayed a family 
because, as we heard, Joseph was a righteous man. And righteousness, as you've heard me say ad nauseum, means that he was in right relationship with God and he was in right and good relationship with other people. So Joseph was a compassionate man. Matthew asked us to remember, too, that it was Joseph's genealogy, not Mary's, that connected Jesus to King David, which is what allowed him to even be considered to be the Messiah, because you had to be a shoot that came out of the stump of Jesse. One well, another reason, and as I talk today, and when you come up and you walk past our Jesse tree today, Look and see if you can see the symbols of the people that I name in this story. Some of them are definitely there. I'm looking over here and I see King David's heart. And I'll be talking about him in just a minute. Jesus, though, interestingly, was adopted into that family as we are now adopted into his family by our baptism. It's an important thing to notice that in the Bible, for God, for us, that adoption is not a secondary thing that you just think of. It is an invitation to be fully included and fully honored in a whole family. And Joseph does that. And there's more in all of this little stuff, in that genealogy and in what we read today. Because being a faithful follower of Jesus' way, Matthew's details of Joseph's family tree is also, interestingly enough, careful not to exclude those people who someone else might have tucked away into a genealogical footnote. You know? So you've heard that where uh, many of us here are from the South. And we say that in the South, people don't uh, tuck away or hide away their crazy people. They put them on the porch and they give them a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, uh, Matthew does that with his family tree a little bit. So um, he intentionally and boldly keeps them in, adding to the strong biblical tradition of scripture, pointing out how God most often acts through highly unlikely people. For Matthew, Jesus' family is a reminder of this. And it's a reminder to his mostly Jewish readers and now to us who have been adopted into that family that earthly kings and their privileged sons and daughters are not favored by God above others. Some of the most interesting departures from the normal structure of a traditional patriarchal genealogy of the time. Boy, that was a sentence I was worried about. <laughs> Involved women, such as Tamar from Genesis 38, Rahab and Ruth from Joshua 2 and the book of Ruth. Ruth, as you may remember, was not Jewish. She was adopted into that family too. All three of whom were important in the historic survival of God's people. Then when the name, then when Matthew names Bathsheba in this genealogy, he even makes sure to call her the wife of Uriah, not the wife of David. Highlighting David's covetousness as well as pointing out again to God's people the deceitful nature of human kings. It took David a long time to get his way back to God. He started from humble beginnings, became a king, a, a terrible ruler in every sense of the word, learned his lesson, and came back to God. Another thing to remember, Matthew does all of this in 17 verses. He reminds us all of these things, that we always have a way back. We always do. Besides reminding us that God works through unlikely people, some of the women that he names represent the agency God intends for all of God's people. Women, men, children, Israelites,
Israelites, non-Israelites. And all of these people set the stage for the faithfulness of Mary, whose conception of Jesus, her yes to God, raised questions of impropriety. But we'd be here until next Christmas if we tried to deconstruct all of that history. So let's hold on to the mystery of where we are in the reading today, where the divine and the human blur and mingle in this story of an ordinary human family whose faithfulness turned the world upside down. Mary's yes and Joseph's yes turned the world on its head. And we are to remember that in every way, that as an ordinary person, we all can say yes, and we all have the ability to turn the world around us on its head and make it a better, more loving, more compassionate place. In today's reading, we hear one of the only stories about Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, who, like his namesake, pays attention to his holy dream vision and honors the loving voice of God with his subsequent faithful action. Joseph, who knows about Joseph? His symbol is on here too. Amen. Which one? Anybody tell me, Joseph? What might be a symbol for Joseph? Yeah, no. Joseph who was Joseph was named for. Because all of these names gone back and forth. The coat of many colors? Right? Okay. It's good. You didn't know you had a test. Don't worry. I don't grade them. Okay. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> um, but Joseph was prepared to act humanely, like his namesake, Joseph, uh, rather than su succumb to his own male pride. And he entered into the long list, this is Joseph, Jesus' father, of people who heard God's call and answered with, here I am, how can I serve? The dream vision that he had reassured him and affirms his own agency because he still has a choice. Gabriel says, you can. Don't be afraid to still marry. Mary. He doesn't say you have to. So he has a choice still, and he has another choice, because as the father, it's his responsibility to name the child. And the name given to him by Gabriel is Jesus, as the scripture says, because he would save his people from their sins. What he would normally do is name him after <laughs> his own, or someone else in his family. Matthew uses that scriptural quote, because he would save his people from their sins, to remind his listeners that the Greek version of Jesus is Joshua, another faithful child of God who brought to completion the redemption of the people from Egypt. Oh, that's the one with the colors, right? Remaining faithful to God and his father's family even after being horrifically treated. The world is an amazing place. The history of our faith story doubly so. How will you listen to God's dream through these stories? How will you live in faith? And as Paul says, be those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ among the Gentiles for the sake of his name. We are all in that family for the sake of his name through our baptism. Amen. Please stand. Turn to page 358 in the book of Common Let's say together the nice thing to do. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, life from life, true God from the true God, he got not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of 
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you are not already uh, for the passing of the peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet your neighbor in the sight of Jesus. Christmas isn't always bright and cheery for everybody, um, and we can enjoy the holy and love that holy time and look forward with hope to it, even when we're having great sadness. But the sadness needs to be recognized, too, that after all, that's why Christ came, right, to help us with things like that. Um, Christmas Eve is at 6 and at 7.30, uh, and so the 6 o'clock one is more... Um, kid family kind of oriented uh, and then the later one but they both have the lighting of the candles and silent night and all that good stuff when we do that are there other are there I know there's announcements I'm missing yes Lisa. Um, we need to thank Sally Catwood for her services mm -hmm. our usher this is her last Monday I think that might be a recruitment call <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, uh, we are looking for, towards our annual meeting, which will be in January. I know that's a long way off, uh, but two people are going off uh, the vestry. And if you are interested in serving on the vestry, it is a three-year appointment. It's a blessing and a joy, I hope. <laughs> Although, it's, you know, yeah, um, it's still a vestry. Uh, and, uh, but it is, it is a huge gift to the church if that is in your wheelhouse uh, please see uh, Lisa in this service or Chris Bailey if you know him because those are the two people who are going off and they are uh, asked to find somebody 
Thanks. <laughs> um, other announcements, anybody? I feel like there's something I'm forgetting, but no one else does. So, uh, let's walk oh, in love. Is, oh, oh, there Lauren's birthday is actually today. Oh, and it's birthday oh, right. Oh, oh. Whose birthday is today? Laura. Laura. And Jim Browns. <laughs> yeah. And Caitlin and Kirsten. And Ken. So please turn to page 830. And so we have Caitlin and Kirsten and Laura and Ken. Caitlin and Kirsten and Laura and Ken. Although we should start with Laura, we're going to start with her. Hey, did we pray for Caitlin last week? Yep. We pray for you again. <laughs> Never. Never knows. Laura, please stand. And stand, stand, stand. Can you stand up for Ken or just like a hand up there? Okay, uh, all together, uh, prayer 50 about our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on your servants, and Ken, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Now walk in love. I just loved us because the fragrance offered us. Oh, oh, here. Okay, it's time to do it. You're a little busy.
that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your prophet, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, proclaiming to you from your creation, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with John and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Take them in remembrance that Christ came because God loves you, sees you as worthy, and invites you to this table. And that said, this is a reminder that this is not an Episcopal table, it is God's table, and all are welcome at God's table.
Let us pray. The post communion prayer is found on page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May today you find peace within. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. And may you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing that you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and go with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank <laughs> you.